Who wants to make first drop just that little bit easier? Let's do this. Hello you lovely people and welcome to another video. It has been uh, a long time since I put a video out mainly because I recently got married. Uh, so all my time and efforts were being spent with the family. Uh, this video isn't going to be a long video. It's not a tutorial by any stretch because this bit of software that I'm going to review today is uh, pretty extensive. And just as a side note and a disclaimer, I have been given this free to trial and uh, review at my own will. Uh, and I'll give it my honest review. Uh, so I didn't pay for this panel. It is relatively expensive for what it is. And there's a link down in the description down below if you want to go and take a look. Uh, there are lots and lots of videos on that web page as tutorials to show you how to use this bit of software because it is fairly extensive. I couldn't do a video, uh, certainly not on my channel. I haven't got hours and hours to spend to show you how to use this bit of kit. You will need to have some basic understanding of uh, things like luminosity mass, frequency separation, but I'll go into that in a second because again, it's, it's these kind of panels that come out for Photoshop they're designed to make your processing a bit easier, a bit quicker, but you still need to have an understanding of what it is. If you don't understand things like luminosity masks, you need to understand that and, and learn about that kind of stuff first before you can use them because just using them without understanding them isn't going to be helpful. And this isn't a video for that. You'll need to do a bit of a Google, have a search on YouTube for luminosity masks. Uh, but having said that, we're going to get into this. So the good thing about these panels, they're designed to make things easier and quicker, and they do that in their very basic function. That's what they're designed to do. They're designed to make the process of things like creating luminosity masks quick and easy, because they're not easy to create. They do take a bit of time. They're very useful in a lot of senses, and uh, this kind of panel does just that. So at the top of this panel, you will notice that there is a section on the left which has all of your adjustment layers that you'll potentially need when you're editing pictures such as landscapes. To be honest, I think this panel is mainly for portrait photography, but I'll come on to that in a second. On the right hand side, you've got your basic tools, your kind of brushes, your clone stamp tools, all in one place makes it easier to find. And in the middle, you've got your different panels. Now this is where you'll swap and change to go to different uh, kind of uh, settings that you would go to in Photoshop to do different things. So bear that in mind. There are lots of different panels down there. They all do different things. I'm going to go over a couple of them that I think I would use. There are some there that I wouldn't really uh, be using in my photography anyway, uh, but certainly worth taking a look. The main one, and when you when you set up your panel, because you have to do a little bit of setup initially, uh, you'll come on to the first one, which is all about masks with curves. Curves. Who loves curves? I do. And uh, I've got to be honest with you, Curves is one of my go-to adjustment layers whenever I'm using uh, any kind of adjustment in Photoshop, whether it's with light or color. If I can do it in curves, I will, because I have so much control, and this makes things even easier. Now, with luminosity masks, now, a quick overview with what that is, if you don't know, is uh, you have different uh, luminosity mask depending on whether you'll want to work with the highlights the midtones, or shadows you'll see there's three different layers they're all marks with a number and that number going up means that it gets more specific to the area you want to mask so if you want to mask the light areas you can either mask larger parts of the light areas or very small parts of the light areas, like just the highlights or do you want to go in kind of into the midtones as well and it kind of gives you a mask based on that luminosity value which is very advantageous if you're a landscape photographer who doesn't like using things like uh, great graduated filters and you tend to have a lot of highlights in the sky and just the sky, you can mask that very, very easily with this tool and then use your curves to adjust however you like. Uh, you have in there a color wheel, which is fantastic to have it at hand there. I love the color wheel as color grading tool in uh, Lightroom now and in, in the camera raw filter in Photoshop. I love the color grading using the wheels because I use it a lot with my videos because in lots lots of videos it's kind of a, a basic tool in, the, in, in video software. It's never really been around in the kind of editing pictures 
until recently. Now it's in a panel right there, one click, and I'm on it. That to me is uh, is worth, well, it's worth a lot to me, let's put it that way, and it, it makes things so much easier. I don't have to go into the camera warfare or come out, go back in, come out, all that kind of stuff. And you can change it on the fly, which is fantastic. To me, that's brilliant. The next one is the raw filter in this. You've got all, you've got a lot of the, the main camera raw filter functions at the at your fingertips right there just in uh, just in that same panel and again time saver time saving labor saving device right there you're on it you're there and it just kind of makes sense and it works uh, the only drawback to that is it does use the camera raw filter engine in photoshop so if you're working on a very large image expect this to take a bit of time to uh to process uh, that's the major drawback of that and you have the color randomization uh, feature on this which I actually had a go at the other day and I actually really really like you can change all kinds of different bits and pieces depending on on light you know what kind of whether you want to change like the highlights or the, the midtones or the shadows or all kinds of things there's so many functions on this that you can randomize there are like I, I, you can't even calculate how many different randomizations there would be in the billions I would imagine uh, depending on the kind of look you want to go for uh, it just it, you know you can you can start with a set of images randomize the first one take that color uh, color sort of uh, uh, color grading if you like and then apply it to the others and actually you're gonna have a nice set of images and it'll be a color that you've probably never used before. So the color randomization is another feature that I think I would probably use. And the last but not least would be the skin retouch, the face retouch. Now, <laughs> this is a, a big deal for a lot of people, you know, learning how to retouch skin with things like frequency separation. It's not easy to do. And it's, again, labor time consuming to get your frequency separation sorted and then after doors, this does it for you and it gives you different ways of doing it as well. It doesn't just give you one frequency separation, it gives you a second one if the first one doesn't work. And I actually really, really like that. I think it's a good uh, bit of kit. Uh, I don't generally retouch skin too much anymore. I used to do it a lot in my earlier sort of working with models and stuff like that. Skin retouch is a, is a personal preference and for me at the moment, I like to keep things really natural, but for someone who wants to get into things like frequency separation, this panel would work really well. And it's the click of a button. Could you use any of the functions here for landscape photography? Yeah, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna retouch a landscape photo. And actually in the retouch panel, there is a dodge and burn function which utilizes uh, the dodge and burn that I like to use. And I'm gonna actually edit a landscape shot using just this panel. I've edited this shot before. This is of Corf Castle, you can see on screen. And I'm gonna edit this using the panel only and compare that to my edit that I did in Lightroom and Photoshop from before. Uh, it obviously won't have the intricacies that I've done in Photoshop on my other one, because I'm just gonna use the panel uh, as much as I possibly can. And we'll just see how, how well it fares up. Uh, before, I added some bits and pieces before uh, but you'll have to be the judge. Stick around to the end of the video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of that. So all in all, do I like this panel? Yes, I do. Do I think it's worth the 80 odd dollars that it's up for? I'm not too sure, to be fairly honest. Uh, I think, my own personal opinion, I think the panel is very clunky. It's very, uh, it's very power hungry, which means it will eat up your processor as quick as that even the the guys who made this recommend increasing your history count to well over 200 your default should be somewhere around 40 or 50 steps but it's going to want you to up that to around 200 because every time you do something if you add a luminosity mask on this uh, the amount of steps it takes to get there things like frequency separation it takes a lot of steps to get there. If you use one of these functions and you want to go back in your history and you haven't changed it, you've only got 40 steps, you're not going to be able to go back far enough to undo what you've done. So I think the, uh, the, I think the idea of this panel is great. I think the functions it has 
on there is really good. I just find it very clunky. I don't know. I don't know another word for it. Just clunky. But I do think it's a very good panel. I am going to use it. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to. I'm going to do this picture in a second, and you'll see it come up. I'll compare it to the one I did in Lightroom and Photoshop, and you tell me what you think. Uh, just tell me what you think and let me know how you think I did. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please whack a thumbs up. That's always going to help my channel. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please stick around, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get updates every time I upload a new video. And until the next one, uh, have a good, have a good day. Take care. Bye. Hi, I'm Andy and I'm here to tell you about my new online landscape photography academy. It's not your traditional online photography course, it's also a mentorship program. Many of you most likely know me from my YouTube channel. And if you enjoy my process of getting an awesome image from the landscape around me, you can learn to do that too. So, how does it work? After signing up for the Landscape Academy, you will immediately receive access to all lectures taking you through every aspect of landscape photography. From beginner courses, through to intermediate, and on to the more advanced photographic techniques. At the end of each lecture, you'll be provided an assessment to progress you through the steps of creating an appealing image from beginning to end. After submitting each assignment, you will receive a handcrafted personal feedback video on your progress, giving you actionable steps to take your work to the next level. These mentorship sessions continue as you build your skill set from beginner to advanced landscape photography. By the time you finish the course, you will have hours of personal video feedback crafted especially for you. Additionally, the entire Landscape Academy is self-paced and you have a lifetime access to all of the content. So there's no need to worry about deadlines or losing access to the content after an arbitrary amount of time. You may want to skip the beginner one course if you have a basic understanding of photography and a good grasp of camera settings. But if you're an absolute beginner, fear not, this course is designed to get you started from scratch. If you want to sign up and get more information, just click the link below or check out the Academy link on my website.